Hello, I am Rahish. Today I am discussing about India's historical rockets. Today, India is one of the leading nation in rocket technology. Indian launch vehicles such as the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV, the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle GSLV and Indian missiles such as Agni, Prithvi are well known worldwide. These are some of the examples of modern Indian rocketry. But indigenous rockets are being used in India for centuries. In the 13th century, rockets were invented. At the time, they were a lethal weapon and they were made using casings of paper, cardboard or wood filled with gunpowder. Those rockets were very similar to those that we today use as fireworks. By the 15th century, other means of artillery became much more effective. Rockets of that time were effective to deter the enemy but not in winning the battle. In the late 18th century, it was all about to change. In India's kingdom of Mysore, rockets took a different path. The Mysorean army used these Mysorean rockets against the British forces of the East India Company in 2nd, 3rd and 4th Anglo-Mysore Wars. These rockets did not have any wooden construction. They had metal construction. They were made with steel tubes which hold the propellant and also worked as the combustion chamber. Because of this metal construction, the rockets were able to withstand much higher chamber pressures, which in turn increased their range. These rockets had the range of about 2000 meters. On the other hand, the European rockets could only reach a few hundred meters, a fraction compared to the Indian counterparts. These Mysorean rockets were made with a type of steel with very low amount of carbon, around 0.02 to 0.2. 3%. Steel with this low amount of carbon is able to be rolled and bended much easily. Hence, it was possible to make thousands of rockets very quickly. Just the fact that it was possible to produce steel with this low amount of carbon at that time gives one more evidence that India possessed advanced technologies even back then. Not only that, the interior of these metal tubes were coated with clay which worked as an insulator protecting the metal casing from the extreme heat during the flight. This innovation is considered as the turning point between India's Mysorean rockets and rockets of other countries from 18th century. These Mysorean rockets also had a bamboo stick about a meter long for stabilization. Rockets themselves were about 20 cm long and 3 to 7 cm in diameter. There were different sizes of these rockets but these were the usual size. The largest of these Mysorean rockets found so far is 38 cm long and 7.2 cm in diameter. There were different versions of these rockets as well. Some had swords attached to them, some had iron points and some had steel blades. After attaching these blades, the rockets became very unstable during the end of their flight, because of which the blades spin around causing even more damage. Not only that, some of the rockets were also used as incendiaries. Those rockets used a pierced cylinder which allowed some of the exhaust gases from the rocket to flow towards the bamboo stick which caused it to catch fire and in fact become an arrow of fire or Agni Baan. The packing of propellant is also found to be of two types. One type had a long passage through the entire length of the rocket and the other type had not such passage. These two types are classified as radial burning rockets and end burning rockets respectively. End burning rockets burns only from one end but a radial burning rocket burns through the entire length of the interior surface of propellant. Because a larger surface area is burning in the same amount of time, the thrust by such a radial burning rocket design is much greater. Even today, this type of radial burning rockets are used for solid rocket motors. The ruler behind this deployment of rockets in the Mysore army was Haider Ali and his successor Tipu Sultan. Mysore army started with a regular rocket corps of 1,200 men during Haider Ali's time. This was extended to nearly 5,000 men during Tipu Sultan's time. 
Tipu Sultan's general, Mir Zainul Abidin Shustri, wrote a military manual called Fatul Mujahideen after Tipu Sultan's instruction. In this manual, he defined 200 rocketmen to each brigade, which were called Kushuns. Mysore army had nearly 16 to 24 Kushuns of infantry. These rocketmen were specially trained for launching rockets. They were trained to define launch angle to properly affect the curve at which the rocket would land. Along with these single rockets, there were multiple rocket launchers which could launch up to 10 rockets simultaneously. Tipu Sultan had also set up laboratories for further development of rockets. The road alongside Juma Masjid near City Market and Tara Mandalpet, Bangalore were at the heart of Mysorean rocket project. Rockets of this era are said to be inaccurate. But the Indian rockets were accurate enough and the Indian soldiers launching them were capable enough to hit and detonate Colonel William Bailey's ammunition stores in 1780 at the Battle of Polilur in the Second Anglo-Mysore War, which ultimately led to one of the biggest defeats of the British forces in India. The Mysore army continued its effective use of rockets against the British in Third and Fourth Anglo-Mysore Wars. The British had never seen such rockets before and the rocketmen would launch hundreds or even thousands of these rockets simultaneously. Hence, there was surprise and chaos in the British forces after every attack. In the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War in 1799, a British officer was on a survey mission near Sri Rangapatna when the Mysore army released an attack with rockets. That British officer had never encountered Indian rockets before and when this attack was conducted, he was scared by these rockets and thus he ran away and left the battlefield. This officer was Arthur Wellesley. After the fall of Mysore, the Mysorean rockets were captured by the British and some of them were sent to England where they were re-engineered and used by the British forces under the name Congreve rockets after the person who re-engineered them, William Congreve. The British used these Congreve rockets in many wars they fought, including the War of 1812 against the United States. Before 2002, only five samples of Mysorean rockets were known to survive, two in UK and three in India. But in 2002, in a village called Nagra, 60 kilometers from Shimoga, 100 Mysorean rockets were found during a restoration of an old well. They were taken to the Shivappa Nayaka Museum, but at the time it was believed that these were just shells and they were not even entered in the register. It was only in 2013 that the shells were recognized as Mysorean rockets. It is believed that the army had thrown these rockets in the well to prevent them from falling into the hands of the British. By now, over 3,000 Mysorean rockets had been recovered from Nagra. India's former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam had said, that when he was at NASA's Wallops flight facility, there was a painting depicting a war using rockets and the side which was using rockets turned out to be the Mysorean army of Tipu Sultan against the British. This was the inspiration behind India's Missile Man, that the world's first war rockets were made in India. Mysorean rockets are the ones which are well known, but Mysorean rockets were not the first rockets made in India. Rockets were also used in India by the Maratha Empire, the Mughal Empire and by others in the Deccan. There is also evidence that rockets were also used in Awadh, that is today's Lucknow. This culture of rockets from different parts of the country still lives in the form of modern launch vehicles and missiles. The Mysorean rockets were not just a leap in India's rocket science, but they were a leap in the history of global rocketry. In summary, be it 18th century rocketry or 21st century rocketry, India will be the leading nation. This was the story of Mysorean rockets, the story of historical war rockets and the story of India's first gift to global rocketry. Thanks for watching my video.